Yeah, that's the Steam Deck on the Minus Forum V3. <laughs> Hi, I'm Clef and you're watching Game Tech Talk. So today I want to talk about the Minus Forum V3, specifically the fact that you can have a video input inside of the Windows tablet. But before we do that, I'd like to address the unboxing video I made a couple of days ago. So you were many to tell me that I was using the back panel wrong. My apology. It wasn't my greatest moment. <laughs> I talked about the colors being washed out. The reason being that the adaptive brightness was on and because I'm filming, there was a lot of light shining down on it. So the adaptive brightness like just cranked it up so that it matches the brightness in the room but otherwise the colors are just fine. That was really just a mishappening. So I tested five different devices on the Minus Forum V3 to see like, what can we do? What kind of use can we make out of that feature? And I was happily surprised with certain aspects to it and some others, while I was not necessarily surprised, I think it'll be important to use this video to make sure that everyone potentially getting this tablet knows what to expect in terms of the video in feature. And that will tie in with some of the devices that we're able to use and some that we cannot. When you're on Windows, it doesn't recognize that function in any capacity. At least I have not seen any documentation to that effect. I have tried myself. I haven't seen anything in device manager. In fact, there's nothing that happens on Windows side when you plug in a uh, USB-C, be it OTG device, be it video input, just nothing. There's also nothing in the BIOS pertaining to that feature. So it, it seems to really be built in and just as is. Also to do that feature, you cannot just take any USB-C cable. You have to have a USB-C cable that has the USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 protocol. There's a user that asked if it was possible to use an eGPU, have the external signal back into the Minis Forum V3. Now, unfortunately, that will not work because for the Minus Forum V3 uh, video input to work at all, you have to shut the device. And even if it did work into Windows, um, it doesn't accept an HDMI or DP signal that hasn't been converted in some capacity to USB 4 to Thunderbolt 4. So if ever that was a thing, you would need external tools as well to do that. I hope that answers the question. But I tested on a Mac. I tested on the Steam Deck. I tested on my phone, which is a Galaxy Fold 4, a the Odin 2, and I also tested on the One X Player X1 using the USB-C out. I was using my Mac Studio using one of the USB-C out on the back panel, and it works. It definitely works. You can have your, your Mac or Mac Mini, probably a MacBook Pro. I would assume the upcoming iPad as well, you can do that. Uh, even an iPhone 15, I know they can cast. I actually had a short on that. However, and there are certain things that you'll see that will repeat themselves, but some devices we can address, some devices we cannot. Mac is extremely finicky when it comes to reading the EDID of a panel. Now, because the panel, we don't have any BIOS, any tweaking capabilities, maybe there's a tool that exists on Mac to force EDID information. I have tried with a software, which I, I basically did that based off of presets that are provided. Maybe with the pro version, you can make your own. I have never looked. But in my experience, I wasn't able to get the full resolution of the panel. That's not necessarily a problem. You could use that with a Mac as long as you have a Thunderbolt 4 that can output enough displays. That's often the concern with Macs is the amount of displays that you're going to be able to output out of the device. In my case, I wasn't able to use the display when using both my monitors, it wouldn't work. So I had to actually disconnect my super ultra wide and then I would get enough juice to power the Minis Forum V3. You might run into that kind of issue, but it definitely works. There is some KVM feature. What it'll do is it'll also send your keyboard and mouse signal to the host device, which means that whenever I'm plugging my Mac into my Minis Forum, I'm actually able to use the keyboard of the device. The trackpad doesn't work. The um, touchscreen doesn't work, unfortunately. And also the resolution is capped at 60 Hertz. When you are uh, using it as a display, the volume buttons are actually used to control the brightness of the panel. So I don't know if you guys will see. 
I can reduce and I can increase the panel just like so. And the keyboard will be used for the volume because the volume will come out of the tablet, assuming that there's an audio signal that goes through your cable. The next device is the one that we currently have on is the Steam Deck and that works phenomenal chef's kiss. So yeah, you can definitely use the keyboard, the, the mouse, the trackpad, just like if you would have connected a mouse and a keyboard. However, there are, I, I'd say two to three caveats. Number one is you do have the full resolution of the panel. So that's great. You have the 2560 by 1600, but you do not have more than 60 Hertz. And there is a solution for that, which there might be one for Linux as well, or Steam OS. Unfortunately, I'm nowhere near being a pro with that operating system. But if you know a solution to push EDID information, EDID information to the panel, you can get higher refresh rate. There is another something that you have to consider when doing this. When you're using the screen feature, your two USB-Cs and the, mic the SD card are rendered useless for the time that you're using it. Why is that a caveat? Well, you have to consider that the Steam Deck is using extra power to push that image signal and, then, and that audio signal. And there are at least at the time being no way for me to give juice to the Steam Deck. Maybe using a USB-C hub, but that's where it gets a little complicated is a lot of those USB-C hubs, they have USB-C uh, USB in, USB-A, HDMI out, and that HDMI out will not work. That's where it gets complicated. So you would need to have a hub that can input the signal, video and audio, but also has a USB-C out that supports the USB 4 protocol or Thunderbolt protocol. For the sake of explaining how this works, if you had such a hub or such a dock, that could work. Moving on to the next device and one that is nice. I'm reshooting the Odin 2 segment because originally the trackpad and keyboard wouldn't work, but it does work now. Sometimes the touchscreen work, now it doesn't work. So it depends. Whenever you connect and disconnect the USB-C, sometimes the connection is, you know, more stable. So you may have to reset it from time to time. One thing that is unfortunate is we are capped at 1080p and 60 hertz. So unless there's a way to address EDID, which I don't know of for Android, we're not able to force anything more. I did see something which had me quite excited in the Odin settings. You'll see here that there's a video output mode which says display port to over type. Oh, see, I just clicked the... Uh, Turn off handheld console screen. But yes, you see the display port. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to work. Of course, I'll remove that because Odin's panel doesn't support that resolution. But even if I reconnect and disconnect. And in the meantime, multi-touch works on the trackpad. Touch screen still doesn't. Um, yeah. But it still doesn't change the resolution. Okay, thankfully trackpad and mouse still works. If we go back, you'll still see 1080p, 60 hertz. And if we go to test UFO, actually, let me do a quick refresh. It's still capped at 60 FPS. I mean, still it works, it works great. It's a lot of fun, but yes, we are limited to 1080p at 60 hertz. But in a pinch, if you're on a trip and you have your tablet with you and you have your Odin 2 with you, the USB-C is, is capable of video out. For that reason, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. You are still stuck to the same resolution and to the same refresh rate. It doesn't go any higher, but as far as, you know, just being able to expand your gaming experience to a bigger screen using the Odin 2, you can do that just fine with the help of just one USB-C cable. The nicest way that you could make use of that panel is using your phone. So in my specific case, I used the Samsung DeX and it works beautifully. Now there is uh, an app that you can get on Samsung DeX to unlock higher resolution. I'm able to get 60 Hertz, 2560 by 1600, just fine using my Samsung Fold uh, Galaxy Fold 4. The trackpad works, the keyboard works, and you know, because DeX is very much like a desktop experience and you're on a trip or you're on a plane and you want to capitalize the screen, you don't mind taxing your battery of your phone a little more, you could do that to gain that big screen. An unfortunate part to that, and I wish so much that I did, is the touch screen really doesn't work. I, I have yet to see, I know that it exists in some panels, but at least with this one, the touch screen doesn't seem to be supported at all. Maybe because it's a different technology. 
One thing interesting is it does show 120 hertz, but I believe that limitation might actually come from Samsung because it used to be capable, it used to be possible, I'm sorry, using this tool called GoodLock that you can download on the Samsung store and then you need to download this thing called Multistar. And from here you go here and you can enable that high resolution. That's how I'm getting 2560 by 1600, but it doesn't matter that I unplug or replug or change whatever else settings, I'm not able to force 120 hertz. But it, it has been done before. I have done it with my Aorus uh, monitor, PC monitor. So it's definitely a thing. It's just Samsung seems to limit to 60 hertz for the time being. At least you have the keyboard and the trackpad and those work just amazing. You even have like three finger shortcuts on Samsung DeX. If you've never used Samsung DeX, it is such a great, operating system experience it's really really good probably one of those experiences that is hard to justify but one that is still amazing is using a handheld pc in this case i used the one x player x1 and much like the other ones it is going through usb c using the usb 4 protocol just one cable into the minis forum v3 and bam you get an image Okay, so there's a few things to unpack here. Number one is the Minis Forum itself is, you know, a, a handheld. I'm not here to question the how or the why. I'm just here to show you what's possible. <laughs> but look, if you wanted to do that, you definitely can. And because we can, at least on Windows, where I'm, I'm way more trained and, and knowledgeable, there is this software called Custom Resolution Utility. And that is a free download online. And what this does essentially is it lets you push a signal beyond what the EDID is. And so because the panel, like we know for a fact that the panel is able to do 2560 by 1600 at 165 hertz. Like there's no questions when it comes to that, right? This is a fact. And so because it is, I, using CRU, Custom Resolution Utility, I have pushed a custom, not resolution, because the resolution is fine, but a custom refresh rate. When trying to do 165, it wouldn't let me, probably because, you know, the, the, the software is trying to stop you from blowing up your panel, which is a risk. But 120 hertz worked just fine. I did try 144. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. I was able exclusively when using that handheld PC to push past the signal that uh, the EDID is set on. The 120 hertz was smooth, it worked well, and just as well with the other devices that were compatible, the keyboard and the trackpad worked on the handheld PC as well. Let's summarize some of the things that works and what doesn't. Now, as far as using an external, so a host device that can push the signal and enough power through USB-C, that works just fine. If there is HDMI involved, a display port involved. You can pretty much assume that it will not work. What will work as well is the keyboard and the trackpad in some scenarios, not every scenarios. Other than that, we know that the touchscreen doesn't work, the micro SD doesn't work, and the other two USB Cs, they, they are pointless when it comes to the screen feature. So yes, th there's none of that when it comes to, you know, using the two other USB Cs. You cannot also use them to bring another device in. So if you had, for example, a wired controller and you're trying to plug it on the other two USB Cs to power your, to play on your Steam Deck, that is not gonna work. I forgot to mention the uh, video in feature works when you completely shut the tablet. So what I did now is I completely depleted the battery. I don't know if it's gonna power up for a few seconds, but in any case, there is no battery left. Okay, so it's not even powering up. So here I have my Steam Deck and I will plug in the USB-C. And normally if the tablet had battery, which is what I wanted to address, usually these panels, you don't need battery. Like one USB-C is usually enough to power the monitor. You're not gonna get full brightness most case scenarios, but it's gonna work. Here, it does not. It doesn't recognize the panel. So you do need to have battery in the tablet. So this is something to keep in mind. So now I'm gonna plug in power. The keyboard just lit up and now we should see the Steam Deck in a few seconds. Let me just replug just to be sure because sometimes it doesn't seem to kick in. There you go. 
So this is something to keep in mind, something that is unique to this product, at least as far as I know, those, those external panels, they only need one USB-C, and you can also supply power extra to it. But unfortunately, this doesn't work here. It doesn't pass through. Like if you look at the battery here, uh, of course, that screen doesn't work. I keep forgetting. Uh, it doesn't pass through current with the USB-C. So, you know, it needs its own sets of power. And of course, then you use power from the external device as well. Another thing I wanted to mention is the lid. When using the screen feature and you close the lid, it does close the video signal, but it's still on operation. On paper, it is an awesome feature to have. But then I'm left with, okay, what are my use case scenarios? I see the value, I see the potential, but I, I feel like it's very specific types of people that can take advantage of all the features of this tablet. I guess my point is, if you are interested in getting it, if you are looking for videos and inputs on that device, really ask yourself, will you be making use case of those features? Because those features are great, granted, if you use them. If you don't, I do believe that a handheld PC is a far superior solution especially if your goal is mainly gaming if you're an artist if you are a person that is often on the road you travel a lot like if i was someone that traveled a lot that tablet would make so much more sense in that context i think it would be a great product to have you're in a hotel you don't care for the tv that is there you just want to be in bed and push your phone into it because that's where you downloaded your netflix episode uh, because you're away from home for a couple of days type of thing and you wanted to back up to whatever you want to watch and you'd rather do it there yeah i totally understand I, I feel like that is a great use case in my situation i don't really do that all too often i do that every once in a while but you know not often enough to justify having a device that does that rather i would bring my tablet along and that would fix the issue but it all comes down to what you have. And if you want a device that expands your possibilities a whole lot with just one device, I have to I have to commend the Minus Forum V3 because it does a lot. It does a lot and it does it quite well. You know, you have an ADA 40 user, you're able to play your games. The panel is great. The sound is decent. The battery life is decent as well. You have a video in like what else do you need out of a tablet? But do you need it? That's the question. And so that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you are, maybe I don't see why you would have clicked on this video and you have no idea what this tablet is all about. But if it is the case, I would strongly recommend uh, watching my uh, unboxing video, which I'll put up here. I made a few mistakes in there, but for the most part, it should give you the introduction to what the Minus Form V3 is. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.